Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video over there for Bant Vanifar. We played a Bant Vanifar deck about three weeks ago. That was a donation deck and did well with it. We got five wins, but there were some cards that we kind of felt were a little off and wanted to change some things a little bit, make a couple small tweaks to like the mana base and, and things like that. So that's what we just did here. Uh, just now here a little bit ago uh, with Twitch chat here, made some updates and we're going to try this out. One of the new things we have here is the couple Planeswalkers in the main deck with going with an Ajani and a Vivian Reed. I really like how Ajani can uh, turn these some of these smaller creatures into bigger threats. Now it's not like amazing putting counters on like putting counters on like a creature that then you eventually like later on sacrifice like that isn't always the best but um besides that like, that's just not going to be something that happens too often uh for us another thing the one thing that a johnny does though is it it's just like a it gives us another angle of attack instead of just having all creatures you know having the the planeswalker as another angle attack that decks have to deal with um or we can kind of sit back um and like with deputies and everything and help protect our Johnny and ultimate it's very powerful and besides that we can also get bring some of these two drops back like maybe if we sack a branch walker to a vanifar we can minus and bring the, the branch walker back to be able to sacrifice to a vanifar again the following turn kind of thing it works really well with our cyborg kral, kral harpooners as well of being able to return those uh back to the battlefield also so i think it does it's going to do a whole lot for us Last time we played the deck, Riverwise Augur was a surprisingly good card. It was like kind of the glue that held our deck together and um, was like played a big part in our wins um, more than what we thought, honestly. And so I'm excited to have that back in the deck. Um, I guess one thing that whenever we're putting this together. I guess one thing I am worried about is we don't have, besides Riverwise Augur, we really don't have more four mana cards to go get with Vanifar. Sacrificing a Bugler or a Jade Light, we only have one Shalai, one Riverwise Augur as target. That is kind of a problem. Last time we did have a Zakama, or not Zakama, but whatever, a Zagana. We had a Zagana also that we replaced with the Ajani. But I guess. I guess maybe we do just need another creature then to have another just even target to even find because we don't want to just have a Vanifar find a Vanifar kind of thing hmm so I guess I guess maybe we do just maybe we just want one more river wise auger um, this is the card that we used last time was we had a, a Zagana in the deck I guess I am going to just take the Ajani back out and have the Zagana. I think normally I would like the Ajani in this kind of deck, but I guess with, with specifically with Prime Speaker Vanifar, um, we, we need the targets at the four mana slot. We can't just have two. Like, that's just not an acceptable number. So I guess we're going to go back to having three and have Zagana back in. So sorry, Ajani, I was just talking you up. We could, yeah, we could have the second Augur also. Second Augur is certainly an option, and not a terrible one. But I think we'll try Zagana, which hopefully will be drawing us some cards sometimes. Yeah. We'll go with that. Y'all think, should I go two Augur? Hmm. No, we'll just, we'll just play the Zagana. Okay. So sorry, Johnny. <laughs> and Johnny's welcome here. Two Shalai. The problem with Shalai is we don't really want to sacrifice Shalai into a five drop. I mean, I guess if we're sacrificing Zagana into a five drop, hopefully it already drew a card. Uh, so I like having the creature with the ETB effect. Maybe we should just play a second Augur. Augur was really good for us last time. Let's get a second one in there. Okay, let's do that. All right, anyway, I guess that's that's enough for an introduction for the deck. Let's move on and play some matches. 
Bant Vanifar. Okay, so I'll update the, our deckless command to have a second River Wise Augur. Because River Wise Augur can do some nice library manipulation for us also. Putting some cards back on top of our library we can then cast like militia you like we can put like a creature that we can find with bugler back on top and then cast militia bugler for example uh and then go grab it we can uh put some some lands that we don't want back on top and then shuffle our library again with like a, a vanifar afterwards we can shuffle away some cards we can put something like a, a target for Vivian to hit back on top and then cast a Vivian or then activate a Vivian. Anyway, looks like we're playing against Teamer Reclamation and main deck Fiery Cannonade certainly hosed my hand here. That was a rough one to see. That's what we need. We need Prime Speaker Vanifar Party Bus. That's the way to go with the Bant Blink deck, to go with Vanifar with Lumbering Battlement. That's not a bad idea. Not a bad idea at all. Yeah, I'm not surprised that our opponent had Cannonade main. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that that was a killer for us. Having the double land war elf opener. Which deck, Joy? When you say, I have yet to see this deck lose, which deck? Our deck or, or our opponent's deck? Definitely glad we added the Vivian Reed in the main deck, though. That was not a card that we had access Let to before. No one said restoration was painless. That was a good draw. Good draw, I mean, best possible draw we could ever have. <laughs> Our other good one would have been Deputy of Detention there. Alright, so we get more Vivian, more Knight of Autumn, more Frilled Mystic, more Kral Harpooner, more Negate. I don't know if we need all those, but. So Harpooner, you know, good against Niv and Krasis, if they have Krasis. If we end up cutting a bunch of cards that Bugler would hit, I don't know, maybe getting rid of the Lyra is not, not too good. This is still 64. Just move away from Vanifar completely.
Kind of changing the deck up completely here. But I'm not sure if we'll have time for just playing Vanifar, Bugler, Riverwise Augur, just like some some a little bit more expensive cards that just have two power. So my thinking of Lyra over Shalai is that with our opponent playing like Shiv and Fire, Lava Coil, like that kind of stuff, like the red removal deals four damage. And you know, can kill Shalai where Lyra has the, the five toughness. Lyra also attacks through a, a Niv Mizzet as well. We're gonna shock in here because I want a blue source out where we could have a frilled mystic potentially. Achilles. You already think the game's over? This game is not over. Hitting our opponent for a lot next turn. Like 11. They block a Jade Light. They go to. Like, I'm attacking with everything, of course. They block Jade Light. They take 11. They're down to 6. Oh, you're saying our opponent can't win? Oh, I thought you were saying that we couldn't win. <laughs> you can't wait for the Explorer sound to rotate out? Yeah. Floor is quite good. I like I actually like the sound though. Ugh. Frill Mystic. Why are you late? If I would have just graveyarded the negate. All right, so they did have the that extra land. I was hoping, so I was hoping by negating the the chemist's insight that we were taking away like their ability to hit, find like a red source. They needed you know another red source. They didn't have, so I was hoping they didn't have third red plus Niv. And I guess I just pass. Or do I play four four crisis? I think I pass. Attack all. Would sack the Jade Light to deal two? Or to deal four to put them to two?
know, they get to just play instant speed since we passed. Man, Niv is so good. It's a lot easier whenever we draw an answer to Niv Mizzet. Draw the Vivian like we did the last time. Attacking with Wild Growth Walker just doesn't do anything. They just block with the Phoenix. We have to draw a removal spell for Niv very soon. Or even or just removal spell for Phoenix and have Wild Growth Walker attack and them have to Ugh. That's not good. We basically have one draw here, otherwise like we're gonna die. I thought we had this. When we negated the Chemister's Insight, they had to have Red Source plus Niv Mizzet on their turn six. And they did. And then we also had to brick on drawing a removal spell, and we did. And then it's just been all downhill. Guess I should have just played the Krasis last turn, though, instead of holding up Frilled Mystic. This is our opponent's ability just to play at instant speed. Okay. If they have no removal or counter magic, we can still get there. That's only a little earlier. I spent money, Titan Show. Alright, so we're going to game three. Other Harpooner. Rekindling Phoenix was awesome for our opponent there. That last game. They're gonna grace us out. Ballpark amount, probably around. Besides, you know, like not counting like these cosmetic stuff, I probably spent around $400 on arena but I've been playing for months now every single day you know like this is why I stream seven hours a day so we also used all of that to get all the rest of the cards so I have all the cards on arena now you're not gonna just be able to get all the cards on arena for four hundred dollars But yes, over over a certain amount of time, yes, you can just get all the all the cards by just playing and using the in-game resources. It's it's a slow process, but so basically, do not want to see rekindling Phoenix again. Don't want to see Rekindling Phoenix because we have negates for spells. So 
So if I do not counter this, we have a three turn clock instead of a two turn clock. So let's see, our, our opponent has their four mana. And like, let's say I counter this, then our opponent has four mana, they play like Wilderness Reclamation, we counter that, then we attack for five, and then we go back to them and we don't have anything after that. Let's just, just make it a three turn clock. I guess our opponent could just have Niv Mizza next turn again. So I guess I should probably play a Krasis for two. Just so we don't just lose to a Niv Mizza, but then we go Krasis for two, they just. They can just shock, you can just have a shock on shock the crisis here, or they just counter. Like they likely have counter spells. Oh, they haven't been playing anything. As long as they don't have Niv Mizzet, but if they do. I mean, I could if I cast Crisis. Can they just kill? Then I'm I'm tapped out. Can they just kill my Jade Light and Crisis? Like they they counter they counter the crisis then they untap and just shiv and fire the jade light, and then I could just be. They have counter spell plus basically if they have counter spell plus shiv and fire, I'm in big trouble. If I just cast this crisis. Or if I don't cast it, then if they have niv mizzet, I'm in huge trouble. Is it more likely they have counter spell plus shiv and fire, or is it likely that they have niv mizzet? Or, yeah, they could just copy a cannonade. They have a lot of ways. A lot of things to do. So Niv Mizzet just ends the game. You know, if we don't find an answer to it. Going this way, at least... While we don't have anything else, the game doesn't end. Okay. That works out. That worked out for us. And we are 1-0. Pretty surprised that's all my opponent had was was just basically one removal spell. They weren't able to kill both creatures. Yeah, I don't I don't know if I really liked the two two crisis and leave up two mana for negate because of how bad that is. Like the crisis just dying to shock. I don't know. Also. Weird decision to make. A lot of choices there. So their opponent just playing the entrancing melody. We were good to go. All right, so new match. So now we'll have kind of back to our main deck where that last game we did so much sideboarding. You know, we'll see if we actually play some Militia Buglers and Prime Speaker Vanifars and stuff like that this game. Gates. Uh-oh. This has got to be bad for us. Gates of Blaze is really strong.
basically all of their cards. Can't really be Guild Summit, or Gates of Blaze, or... The Gatebreaker Ram. I can't beat any of it. So if they do cast Gates of Blaze this next turn, they kill the three things, but they don't kill Shalai. So that's why I kind of like getting all this, this pressure out here to incentivize my opponent on casting Gates of Blaze immediately. If they don't cast it, then we'll start pumping Shalai and just try to keep Shalai out. Basically, Shalai is just going to stay out of Gates of Blaze range. Until they play the four mana, until they play Circuitous Route. Uh, Clarion with Lifelink? Brutal. That's brutal. I guess the Judith Priest video is ready to go up on YouTube, so I'll start getting that one ready to go here. Oh, today's the 5th. Whoops, I wrote the sixth on Esper Legends. So basically, if I do not, if I just activate, if I just activate Shalai, then they play a sweeper, we die to the ram. This way we don't die to the ram with a sweeper, we just basically die because we lose all of our stuff. The Gates of Blaze just wrecks our entire board. Basically, I'm just, I'm just playing this as they don't have Gates of Blaze this turn. I, mean, that was, I think that was my best way to win this game. Because Gates of Blaze would have just killed everything anyway. But I think my, my best way to actually win was put them on on having... I put have lethal there. It's kind of the problem with Deputy of Detention being our removal spell. Is it's so... So... Fragile.
But of course, we're not winning a later game against the guild summits and everything. So, just try to, you know, win all out for that one game there. So we need Knight of Autumns, Vivians, Frilled Mystics, and Negates do a good job of countering stuff. Baffling ends. Get rid of Rams and Krasis. Cutting Deputy, because it's just too fragile. And... I mean, Tristani, Biogenic Ooze, these are like cards that also just kind of get swept up. I may just have to cut Buglers if I'm just cutting... Like, I, I kind of have to cut Bugler if I just cut so many other two-power stuff. Hmm. So we've got to cut four more cards. Yeah, I mean, ooze gets swept up very easily. Am I just not going to do Vanifar stuff? Like, is there even anything to really Vanifar for this kind of matchup? Like, besides, like, try to find Knight of Autumn, and then what's Knight of Autumn going to turn into Shalai? It's just, like, this doesn't seem too useful. Did this not let me sideboard? I was clicking done. I really hope this let me sideboard. I really hope it didn't just end early. Please let me sideboard. We really need to sideboard this match. We brought in so many guards. Dang it. These are cards I sideboarded out. We're not going to win. I thought I clicked in time too. I was I was right at the done and I was like it was basically as I was clicking it went away, and so that's why I kind of knew something was up. Yes, Eddie would. Yes, I would say playing Magic helps you get better at Magic. Whether you're playing Magic Online or Arena, that still helps you for getting better in Paper Magic. We're not going to be able to win this. Like, we have to get just incredibly lucky with our opponent just not really doing anything, basically. Okay. Yeah, I'll restart after this. And that's game. What can Vanifar do for us?
What can you do for us, Prime Speaker Vanifar? Not much. Okay. Oh, thanks, McDowell. Happy to hear that, saying watching you think through plays help and realizing how important patience is just helped me uh, deck a red deck wins deck with the Dovin's Duke deck. I don't have any answers to Gatebreaker Ram in the main deck besides the very, very bad Deputy of Detention, as we saw the first game. It's a, certainly a matchup I, I have to sideboard it there. Have to have the Baffling Ends and the Vivians. But overall, I don't expect us to beat Gates a ton. We have Frilled Mystic, Negate. Those are cards we need to have. You know, we have to be able to counter their Gates of Blazes. Oh, right. Sorry, Yud. I'm sorry. I was just frustrated. And didn't restart the client. Sorry. Why there's like no sound effect or anything, or there's just no, no kind of warning at all of, hey, you're we're about to, like, why is there not like within the last five seconds of like hit submit now? It's just beyond me of why that there's just nothing about that. Okay, Esper Control. Another matchup where Deputy Detention's dead. I don't like this card. It's good against the Hyper Aggro decks. That's it, though. Any deck with removal, just not good against. So, good thing we have four Crisises, though, instead of three. Last time we played the deck, we had three Krasis, so good thing we have a fourth. So we have three more left in the deck now. have anything that we're drawn into here though uh, besides I guess Krasis or Vivian or something I wouldn't say the deputy is too fair of a card in a world of unfair ones I don't it's not really about fair or unfair, it's that Deputy is too fragile. It's a creature that needs to stay on the battlefield for the rest of the game, otherwise your opponent gets the permanence back that it took. And it's it's difficult to have creatures stay on the battlefield for entire games in standard, with how much removal is in standard. And it being a 1-3, attacking you know, therefore attacking for one damage does not end games in any reasonable amount of time at all. And so just playing the card and expecting it to stay on the battlefield throughout an entire game is just not a reasonable expectation. It is good against decks with a lot of permanence that and that don't have removal, or a deck that has permanence and but does not have removal. So a deck like Mono Blue, it is awesome against Mono Blue. Mono Blue has lots of permanence that you want to exile. It does not have removal. I 
yes, hostage taker is, is much better because you don't need the hostage taker to stay around forever. You may need hostage taker to stay around for one turn, maybe, or maybe not. Maybe you just need to exile the thing and take and cast it. Yes, it is also good against specifically Hydroid Krasis because it, it exiles Krasis for good. And tokens, if... Yeah, it's good there too. So it is good against, like, it's good against even, like, the red decks, like, where it, it eats a, a burn spell. It's good there too, you know? So against the aggro decks, like, white decks with tokens, red decks, mono blue, good there. Any kind of mid-range and... I guess mid-range matchups, if they specifically have Hydroid Crisis, even resetting a Wild Growth Walker isn't so bad. There's just so many decks where Deputy is pretty bad. I think our opponent just timed out and passed turn. Hey, good job, DJ Polly. But did you ever, did you have the combo of Tajik and Shalai? That's such a ridiculous combo. Yeah, Vanifar here. This is our avatar. So I don't want to put more creatures out in front of Akaya's Wrath. Huh. I was not expecting to win that game. Don't really know what happened to the opponent. It's possible that we're going to need Baffling Ends for Thieves Sanities. I have Vivian's right now is basically the only things that kill Thieves Sanity. Let's get one one Vanifar in here over a Wild Growth Walker. Oh, oh, not not Takali Shalai. Um, if I said Takali Shalai, yeah, Tristani's good. Tristani, if they do have Thieves Sanity and start taking our stuff, Tristani gives it back to us. Plus, it's just three bodies for one card, which is good as well. Oh yeah, your your spreadsheet. Yeah, your your spreadsheet was Dutch was incredibly in depth. It wasn't it wasn't really what I was thinking about for and what I was thinking about was for uh, not not for War of the Spark cards per se, but for uh, for like the cosmetics and stuff. And and I'm I'm just not gonna need it. So like basically, I was thinking of something very simple that I, I'm not gonna need. After that, you know, like it was just an, an idea at the time, but yeah, that spreadsheet you have, and very impressive, very in depth.
So we can shock in a hollowed fountain and keep Frilled Mystic available. Which of course is face up. All of our cards are face up. The opponent knowing all of them. So we'll see what they actually play into it, if anything. No, Hornbill, I don't I don't think Bant is better than Soltai for Vanifar. No, like, like I was saying, Dutch, I, I'm not going to need any. I don't I don't need any Excel sheet myself. Yeah, but Midnight yeah, Midnight Slayer here was, was wanting to see some Bant Vanifar, so we got some Bant Vanifar. But it's it's not a, a better deck than Sultai. I want to at least cast the Krasis for uh, drawing two cards. I'm not really willing to cast this unless it's drawing at least two cards. But yeah, so there we go. Yeah, if anybody in the community wants to check out that Excel sheet and hopefully use it on their own. So we are two and one. Our expert opponent did not put up much of a fight those games. They didn't do very much. We lost to Teamer Reclamation. No, Gates. Never mind. Teamer Reclamation was the previous. Oh, wait. Did we? Yeah, that was the previous one. Or maybe we beat Teamer Reclamation. But yeah, never mind. We lost to Gates. And uh, I didn't get to sideboard for game number two. Which really hurt us. I should play the breeding pool, but too late. I thought that was Hinterland Harbor at first, but obviously Hinterland Harbor doesn't have that style, so it couldn't have been, but I was just thinking this was non-shock, non-shock. Oh no, not Gates again. Not Gates again. Oh, hey, Andrew. Oh, not Gates. Yay. Dang, now I need that Vanifar back. Yeah, GG's. Yeah, you beat us up real bad with the Gates deck. It was, that's a... It's kind of match that we're not winning that game one at all. And I tried to sideboard and, you know, sideboard a ton of cards and whenever... Right whenever I was sideboarding, clicking, done, it it went away, and I, I guess I took just a, a second too late, and so we didn't get to sideboard, and pretty rough. I I don't know that card, Hornbill. Okay. Lyra's got 
a whole lot of work to do. Let's keep everything in check. Good curve for the opponent. You know, Guardian on two, Chain Whirler, then Phoenix, then Hellkite. We can't complain too much. We had Atlanta Werewolf, Jade Light, and then I took a turn off because I explored the Vanifar over here because I thought there were gates. Definitely wish I would have just kept that Vanifar and played that. I think we'd be in a better spot if we would have done that. From here, act, us getting through is going to be tough, honestly. And us winning this game, not exactly sure how we're going to do that. The only way to get rid of Rekindling Phoenix is Deputy of Detention for us. No land for the opponent there. So I'm waiting a turn on Krasis. I want Krasis to draw three. So we're going to play a 6 6 Krasis next turn. So I guess I'll just play this Wild Growth Walker. Banch refers to the color combination that we're playing here. Blue, white, and green put together is, is Bant. It's a creature tutor like pod plus one, one, one counter. That's not. Well, let us begin. It's not too specific. I don't. I don't know what that means. Basically, the only way that I think we can win this game is very large Hydroid Crasises. Finding more Hydroid Crasises kind of thing. I don't <clears throat> foresee us really winning any other way. Drawing four lands is obviously not ideal. Neoform, green, blue, sorcery as an additional cost. The, the spell, sacrifice a creature, search your library for a creature card with CMC equal to one plus the sacrifice creature's CMC. Put that card onto the battlefield with an additional one we'll counter on it, then shuffle your library. That card can do some stuff. It's not a bad one to draw. Please don't have a lightning strike. No, don't have a lightning strike. Ugh. That's unfortunate. So... Basically, Neoform. I mean, it's it's similar to Eldritch Evolution, I guess, but it's going to be better in some some forms, worse in others. It well, it has to get the, the creature with exactly CMC cost equal to one more. Where? Yeah. Where Eldritch Evolution was a whole lot more versatile. It doesn't exile itself, though. It doesn't say that it exiles itself. Eldritch Evolution does. I don't know if that's too relevant in standard. In other formats, that could be relevant, though.
I don't expect it to have that much of an impact on standard, basically. It may have a small impact. Cloaking says Todd doesn't seem to have much fun playing this. Well, I mean, what? We have nothing to do. A curious choice. I'm just, all I'm doing is waiting to lose. That's all we're doing is just kind of waiting to lose. We have nothing to do. So. It's kind of playing a little slowly. They just have like a long turn and then we draw a card. Hey, we actually have something. How it. Debo Force says there is a busted combo you can do with Neoform. Turn one, Land War Elf. Turn two, Neoform, sack it to get an incubation door with a 1 1 counter. Turn three, you can play. I guess five or six mana planeswalkers. I mean, if you just played a just a regular incubation druid, you could still have Vivian on turn three. You don't get six mana on turn three that way, but I don't know if that's really a, a busted combo. It's just, I mean, you could already just play Vivian on turn three, just playing a land War off on one, and then a land War off or, or a druid. Like right now, for six man, you could play turn one elf, turn two druid plus elf. And then you could have six mana. So it's, you know, it's not as clean of just having that one card, but that's nothing too different from what you can already have in standard. This game is too late, this Hellkite. It's gonna keep us from winning. That was a lot of lands. We only have 24 in the deck. You know, we, we didn't even draw like any like, even like a Bugler to help us find another Krasis. Um, The whole not having removal except for deputy to detention part of this deck, I kind of hate. How are we ever going to beat a rekindling phoenix? I just can't. Honestly, if I would have just kept the Vanifar early, maybe that whole game's different. But that was that was probably that game was me just not keeping the Vanifar. We could have shuffled that shuffled all those million lands on top also away. We don't have any obvious cards to take out of our deck for this matchup. I think I do have to keep Deputy of Detention. Okay, well, I know for sure that I still had time left on that timer. Uh, that's that's still a little bold. Maybe not for sure, but I was looking. I was actually just looking at that timer up here. I was looking at it, and I was moving my cursor down to hit OK, and then it, it just the screen went away.
No, I did not see Massacre Girl. Yeah, it could be due to client lag of like me needing to reset, restart uh, the client. That could certainly be a thing. Because it's not usually like that, but it's been like that the last couple matches. But usually I can, you know, go down to like five seconds left and, and stuff and still hit submit. But maybe that is a client lag thing. Masker Girl enters the battlefield. Each other creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature dies this turn, each creature other than Masker Girl gets minus one, minus one. It's a pretty strong card. You know, like, if, if there are no X1s on the battlefield, you're just paying five mana for a 4-4 four, four Menace. And that is not very valuable. That's just that's not a very good card, but if there are X ones on the battlefield that it actually that it kills, and then potentially X twos on the battlefield, then then it, that it kills and so on, it can be very good. But the the floor is just five mana four four menace, which is a pretty low floor for standard. Alright, so I'm supposed to bugle her before Jade Light, because Jade Light can reset the library for the next card. Our opponent's not doing a whole lot over here this game, just playing the, that one Lava Coil. Hmm. Let's look for more lands. Come on, more lands with Krasis. So I guess Massacre Girl is supposed to be a throwback to Massacre Worm. I feel like it would have made sense to have... If, like, it's supposed to be a throwback to a worm, just a... Like, the, the creature not be a human. You know, be, like, some kind of worm-like creature. Like a smaller thing. Like, whatever a, a smaller worm would be called. Not sure what our opponent's gonna do, but we're gonna play Tristani, make our creatures larger and attack. I think Massacre Worm is a card that's been asked since Return to Ravnica. It is a meme. And somebody else says Massacre girl is a meme character. Memes are not for me. So I don't even really know what that statement really means. It's a, a meme. Masker girl is a meme. Like what is... Does that mean it's a joke? So Masker girl is a joke? Or what it... What does that even mean? Not a joke? Okay, memes are not jokes. Well, what? So... What does the statement, Masker Worm is a meme? mean. It means she's a recurring flavor character that had yet to get a card.
So Mi means she has become a popular character on the fandom, and thus her name has a deep meaning for such fandom. Okay. Popular, okay, so she, so saying Massacre Girl is a me means Massacre Girl is a popular recurring internet reference. But, yeah, so overall, I'm not expecting Massacre Girl, like, just the only looking at this card and everything. This doesn't... Strike me as a card that's going to see too much constructed play. Like, you know, obviously it, it could, like, at first kind of thing. These are two good cards. As you know, like, people are going to try it out, but I think, like, over the long run. Not really expecting it to. Like, we already know how, like, Plague Mare has... Like, just think of, like, how hard Plague it is for Plague Mare to actually kill stuff. And it costs three mana. By turn five, like, killing some things that have one toughness is pretty tough. Pretty difficult. A Massacre Girl is a damnation with a certain board state stable to a 4-4 with Menace. Card is good. That certain board state would be incredibly rare. Not incredibly rare, but very rare. I just like think of like this whole game that we were playing. Here. It's not really doing anything. Like a ma you know, Masker Girl would be a four-four menace for five. I think that's just going to be what she's going to be most of the time is just a four-four menace for five. I think the best thing, I guess, the best thing with Masker Worm, I guess I, I didn't consider this at first. The best thing is post-combat playing it, like after, as kind of like a trick, like after, you know, attacking and being able to kill things, like after damage that have reduced toughnesses and everything. But then if, if you're playing that kind of deck, you probably, you know, I don't know if you want all your stuff dying. So then that's kind of weird. Then you're just sitting with, like, the 4-4. Four, four. Could be easier for the opponent to stabilize then. Is that something that you're going to... So... Right, yeah, so it can have an effect of killing a lot of things, yes. But is that something that you are... going to be... I'm just playing this thing. Is that an effect that you're going to be desiring in, like, a, a deck where you're, like, playing creatures in combat kind of thing. If you're like an aggressive deck. I mean five mana cards. Like there's some really good five mana cards in standard. 
Are you certain of your decision? <laughs> that was our first time to activate Vanifar, round four. Round four, game three. First time that we activated Van Vanifar. And all we did was turn a land of off into a wild growth walker. I couldn't play, you know, Biogenic Ooze would have been a nice card to play last turn, but with our opponent having shock and having shock mana up, playing Biogenic Ooze didn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, we're pretty dead. How convenient. An excellent choice. Our opponent has been playing around Biogenic Ooze incredibly well. I didn't live through hell to lose to you. Alright, so that's Bant Vanifar. We went 2-2. Two -two. Alright, we got 20 gems. That's good. I think biggest takeaway from the deck is that we really miss having Sultai. Basically, really miss having removal with this deck. Man, Deputy Detention was just awful for us. And just not having Hostage Taker or Chupacabra, like anything like that. Even Teamer, like Teamer having Rekindling Phoenix is kind of a lot better than we have going on here. I think I like Teamer a lot more too with Rekindling Phoenix and just more ooze. Tristani wasn't very impressive. Bugler, neither. Our. Yeah, I mean, we have like Krasis, but. Vanifar with Bant. Sorry, Midnight Slayer. Just did not... It's not impressed with this deck at all. Um, I know last time we played this, you know, we got five wins. But just like playing like a regular Simic deck, like just like my Simic decks, like with just even like quasi Duplo Ooze, just playing a lot more Vivians and cards that are like decent removal spells and everything it just didn't seem like vanifar augur these cards just worth it just playing just just playing re regular simic like simic adapt bio or like i said quasi duplo ooze like those decks are just going to be a lot better in my opinion than what this deck was no i don't think four color is is the way to go I mean, this Sultai deck, this Sultai Vanifar deck is certainly good. This is a good one, um, where you actually get removal, cast down, Chupacabra, Hostage Taker, that really helps. And we have a bunch of Vivians. That's that's the thing is like we had, you know, we played one Vivian and the Vivian was good, but need more Vivians. Yeah, White didn't add anything. Um. Or with the Teamer version, we got a couple more Vivians. Ravager Worm is a solid card to get. Same same with Hellkite. Like these are pretty solid top end stuff. But then you just get the power of Rekindling Phoenix, 
which is awesome. And we actually have a good removal spell. Lava Coil is a good removal spell. With playing Bant, we just don't get a good removal spell. Um, you know, we don't have a cast down or a lava coil or anything like that. I know, I always want more Vivian, because it's just such a good card. Well, so yeah, so Midnight Slayer, so I know, so you're saying that, you know, you don't want to get the, the other lands. I would kind of, you know, and like you're playing like your event tomorrow. I'd kind of recommend just playing, just staying with Simic. Like if you, if you have the Bant lands, you probably have the Simic lands, right? Just stick with Simic. Just stick with, like, uh, quasi-duplicate ooze. Like, quasi-duplicates can't be that expensive. And this is basically the rest of the deck, just more biogenic oozes. Or the Simic Adapt. Same kind of deck, but then this, this one, we have, like, the Frilled Mystics in the main. With this kind of thing, so we have, like, Frilled Mystic instead of quasi-duplicates, for the most part, is the, the big change here. I guess... This, this version doesn't have Explore Creatures as Growth Chamber Guardian and Familiar also. <laughs> you want to get him, but the wife disagrees. Yeah, they're not not too cheap. But anyway, that was Bant Vanifar. Even though we went 2-2, two and two, didn't, not, a, not a great feeling deck. Not too, and not too impressive overall. I think if you're interested in a Vanifar deck, like we were just saying, I think it would stick to Teamer or... Soul tie where you get some better removal spells besides just this deputy of attention. The other thing about the other thing about those decks is, and besides just that, our four mana slot really is a problem. Shalai and River Wise Augur are just miles miles worse than Rekindling Phoenix and um, Hostage Taker Chupacabra. You know, so like our our Vanifar just doesn't even is it even that great in this kind of deck because you know we can sack like branch walker into like bugler or jade light and then when we're sacking here we're not getting like phoenix or or chupacabra or hostage taker we're getting like a shalai as we saw there like we'd have like like you know even that last game when we finally activated vanifar all i did was turn a deputy into a shalai it's just not even that good so yeah the four mana slot is a huge problem for this deck also so Stick to Teamer, stick to Soltai for Vanifar. But Vanifar is a pretty decent card, just not really with this shell. All right, so if you are watching this video later on on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.